Thank you all for being here today. Thank you for Derek and his team for hosting this great event. And uh, I have come to be the bearer of bad news as usual. So let's jump into my presentation here today, which is entitled, The Fear of Sacrifice in the Freedom Movement. And uh, how many people by a show of hands here are, uh, would say that they're very familiar with my work? So a, a good majority of the room, maybe about two thirds of the room, how many people would say that they're new or even completely brand new to my work? Okay, you guys are in for a treat. <laughs> so um, what I wanna first do here today is give a general caveat that I give with almost all my presentations. And that's that I am not here to sugarcoat anything, okay? If you're expecting the person to give you uh, what you want to hear and uh, what you think is going to be the optimal outcome, uh, you came to the wrong place and you're listening to the wrong speaker. So my first caveat is here today, the people who aren't emotionally prepare, prepared to hear a message of resounding hard truth should leave the room now because this I'm not going to be the person that's going to sweet talk you and give you some new age bullshit to chew on, okay? I'm going to hit people with hardcore, uncomfortable truth in this presentation. And unfortunately, a lot of people are not going to want to hear that uncomfortable truth, especially people who believe that they are on the right side of the equation already. And I say they believe that in their own mind. But unfortunately, they have not actually made the changes in their life, in their behavior, and are actually doing the things that need to be done in their daily actions. And that's most people, quite unfortunately. Otherwise, the world wouldn't be in the situation that it's in. It would be a vastly different place if we were really acting the right way. But most people are not. They're sitting back watching. They think life is a spectator sport. They're waiting for other people to do what needs to be done. And I got news for you. It doesn't work that way. It never has and it never will. Okay? And you could hear. I have a little bit of a chip on my shoulder about it. I'm not afraid to tell people that. I'll look each one of you in the eyes and tell you I have a chip on my shoulder about it. Because I've been doing this bullshit work for the last 15 years of my life with little to no result in the world. As a matter of fact, the world has gotten drastically worse from when I started. And I have a problem with that. And everybody should have a problem with that too. But the problem is not enough people are doing anything about it. They're complaining about it, they're hoping it for change, hoping it to change on its own, they're wishing it to change on its own, and they're sitting back watching other people who are doing real work, and they're not getting personally involved themselves. So that's what this presentation is going to be about. People in this so-called freedom movement, and I call it the so-called freedom movement, right? I don't care if you're my friend, I don't care if you like me, right? We're way past that. Right? I don't talk because I expect you to like me. I don't care whether you buy anything that I bring. I don't care whether you visit my website and give me hits. I'm not interested in that. I'm here to speak the truth. That's what I'm charged by creation to do. Yeah. Yeah. Period. Okay? So people in this movement say, quote, unquote, underline, double quotes, triple quotes, quadruple quotes, say, they want freedom. But when you actually explain to them what are the requirements to attaining the state called human freedom, and there are requirements for that state of existence. When you explain the requirements to people, most of them are like, fuck that, I'm out. I'm out. Okay? Because they intuitively make the understanding and the connection and recognize that's unimaginably hard work. And it takes personal life sacrifice to meet those requirements. We're going to talk about what those sacrifices are and why people don't want to make them. 
So you have to understand, saying you want freedom does not make it happen. Action makes it happen. Personal sacrifice in your life to do the right thing makes it happen. Getting up off your ass makes it happen. Not being a spectator sport and expecting Mark Passio to do it. Because guess what? I don't got it. Derek Bros doesn't got it. We don't have this. You got that? You understand that? Okay? Everybody has to have this. Everybody has to put weight. Not just a few people. That's some new age bullshit that's told to people. It only needs to be a little bit of people. No, wrong, incorrect. It needs to be the vast majority of people doing this work, okay? So the answer is get yourself out of the chair and get yourself on a stage. That's the answer. How many people are ready for that? How many people would even know how to do that? You know? But instead, here's what's happening in our world. We're not achieving human freedom. We're not even moving close to human freedom. We're moving infinitely further away from it. This is what's really happening. And I'll be the person to tell you if no one else will. Evil is winning. Evil can win. You know, this fairy tale that good always wins is total nonsense. Evil can win. Evil has won in the past. Ask people who have been murdered by totalitarian systems. Find out how evil can win. Open up a history textbook and you'll find out how evil can win. Evil can win. We have to stop telling ourselves this bullshit lie that evil can't win. Evil can win, and it is winning. Freedom is being destroyed on this planet, and it's being turned into a complete prison. And if you don't recognize that, you don't even belong in this room. Okay? Slavery is being instituted on a worldwide scale. And you know what? I'm one of the only people that in the freedom movement generally uses this word. People are afraid of using it because they think, everybody will think, I'm talking about plantation, ball, and shackle, and chain slavery. And there's other kinds of slavery. There is covert slavery. There is mental slavery. There's mental bondage. There's mind control at work that keeps people in a state of servitude. And most people don't understand how those occult mind control techniques work because they have no understanding of deep-seated occult psychology. They don't understand how that works. But your masters do. Your owners do. They understand every aspect of occult psychology. And they're using it to keep all the people around us in a total state of thrall, in a trance, in a mind control trance. And it's up to us to break it, but how many people are speaking that truth, plainly and simply? Some, a few, but not nearly enough. And like I said, I don't have this. I'm only one of the people doing it. The world needs to be doing this. People who say they're awake need to be doing this. Not just Mark Passio, not just Derek Bros, not just a, a pissant handful of people in the so-called truth movement. Not good enough. Not gonna cut it. So why is a global, true global awakening of humanity not happening? And if you think it's happening, you're delusional because it isn't happening, okay? We're at the maybe very, 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 very hair-thin beginning of that process. But if you think that's anywhere truly underway on a scale that's going to really make a difference, like I said, I think you're, you're a wild-eyed optimist in a state of delusion. And you don't understand where we're really at as a species and what's really happening and who's really in control and what they're really doing and how. Far too few human beings have become personally involved in what I call the great work of morally educating other people. And even fewer have made the personal sacrifices that are required to reverse humanity's descent into global tyranny. Not enough people are doing that. There's where the tr that's where the fr so-called freedom movement is at. That's not the average person. That's the freedom movement. They're kicking back, waiting for other people to do the work instead of doing it themselves. Okay? And like I said, I have a big chip on my shoulder about it, and I'm done sugarcoating it to people. 
If you're familiar at all with my work, you understand that I dive very deeply into true spirituality and human consciousness. And that doesn't look like some new age teacher teaching fairy tales, talking all nice to people because they want everybody to like them and give them money. I couldn't give a shit about any of that stuff, okay? I'm here to tell you exactly what's really going on. And that means understanding ourselves first and foremost. The internal work has to come before the external work. And too few people in this movement understand that. They're all worried about the financial machinations that are going on, the political machinations that are going on. But how many of them are really delving deep into the psychic world? How many of them are delving deep into the occult world? This many, that's how many. A pissant few. They are not studying their own consciousness, and therefore they're not understanding how the sorcerers of consciousness of this world are putting people in a trance. You know, without that internal knowledge, forget about changing anything in the external sphere. Not going to happen. Because a cult, an occult priest class has that information, and they're wielding, wielding it against the population like a weapon and the population has no idea what's going on at large. So I teach the aspects of consciousness. So this first column I'm gonna build out is the aspects of consciousness. And anybody that understands my work, you'll know that this is going to be the three main aspects of consciousness, the trinity. Thought, emotion, and action. Then in the second column I'm gonna build out that we have to have a personal sacrifice that we put out into the world about those three aspects of consciousness. A sacrifice in the realm of thought, a sacrifice in the realm of emotion, a, a sacrifice in the realm of action. If we want to achieve the, what the requirement is to make change really happen. So we have to make an attainment or move forward and make an evolution in consciousness. That's the third column that will be built out. And then I'll explain why we're not doing those things and what the failure of those aspects of consciousness are. They are the actual death of the individual. That fourth column, the failure or stagnation of evolution. And because most of the population lives there permanently in that fourth column, that is why our cult masters refer to the general population of human beings as the dead. That's what they call us. Because we haven't evolved our consciousness. So let's build these columns out one at a time. The aspect of our consciousness is thought. That's the first aspect of our consciousness. In order to build that out and move it forward in evolution, we have to sacrifice our time and attention. I show people the amount of work that I've taken in from other researchers, other teachers, other people who have attained a higher state of consciousness and have performed the act of love, of putting that out into the world for others to understand. And I show people the amount of information that that really comprises. And they almost pass out. They're like, you want me to look into all of that? You want me to research all of that and take all of that knowledge into myself like you've done? They're like, you think I have that kind of time? You think I could spend that much attention on that? And I'm like, and you want the world to change. Really? Really? You think it's not going to take that kind of work and it's going to magically just change on its own because you want it to. Good luck. Reality doesn't work like that, unfortunately. That's a mindset for babies. Okay? You've got to sacrifice your time and attention to get to the level of knowledge that someone like myself is at. I'm not, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You know, people, the reason the world isn't changing is because people don't know what I know. They haven't made the sacrifice of time and attention to learn what I've learned. And again, I'm not here to be nice about it. I'm here to tell the truth about it. I have a big fucking chip on my shoulder about it anymore because people aren't moving forward. They're standing still. When you do that, then you'll have the knowledge you need, the, the requirement of knowledge. And the real requirement of knowledge is the knowledge of true objective morality and natural law which is the basics, the, ver the very underlying basics of all of my work. So if you're not familiar with that, you should watch my natural law presentation and my podcast where I cover natural law. And you'll understand what all of that entails. To not do that is the failure of our thoughts. 
So we remain in ignorance. And most of all, we remain in ignorance of objective morality and natural law. And that's why the world can never change. Because without that knowledge, you don't understand what generates freedom or what generates slavery. It's called the law of freedom. As the aggregate population becomes more moral, they become more free. And as the aggregate population becomes more immoral because they don't know objective morality, they become more enslaved. That's what the occult masters are trying to hide from everybody. They don't want people understanding that simple equation of the law of freedom. As morality increases, freedom increases. As morality declines, freedom declines. That's the knowledge we need to have. But how many people have it? Like I said, a pissant few. Our emotions are the second aspect of consciousness. The required sacrifice is selfish concerns. How many people in the world wake up every single goddamn day and all they think about is what can I do for me, 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 me from the minute they wake up to the minute they fall asleep at night? 99% of the damn population. And you know what that's called? That's called Satanism. That's what Satanism is. I know. I know what Satanism is. I know, I know a little bit about it because I was a priest in the religion of Satanism for about seven years, okay? So I know what I'm talking about when it comes to Satanism. That's how I learned a lot of the knowledge that I have from the dark occult. I understand how they're controlling the world because I was involved with them because they recognized my intelligence and my communicative capabilities. And they wanted to tap that, and they wanted to hone that, and they wanted to groom that and bring me up into their ranks to make me one of their eugenicists. Because they knew I had that capability and I had that darkness inside of me. And you know what? I still do. And if you don't have that darkness inside of you, face it, become comfortable with it, and own it. You don't know yourself. And we're going to talk about that later. But when we abandon our true selfish concerns and we widen our concerns for the benefit of all and the freedom of all, then we develop care. That's the attainment or evolution. That's the requirement. Care for truth. Care for freedom. Care for justice in our world. And if we don't do that, we are at the failure or stagnation of our emotions, which is total apathy. We don't give a shit. We don't give a fuck about what's going on in the world. We don't care if freedom is dying. We don't care if truth is dying. It doesn't matter. Where are most people in the world? They're firmly in that right-hand column, if we're being honest with ourselves. And then action is the final aspect of consciousness. And this is where most people lag. You know, this is where most people aren't moving forward. Because of this, we won't sacrifice personal comfort. You got to sacrifice personal comfort to do this shit. That's why most people won't do it. I look people in the eyes, I tell them, you won't do what I do. Because you understand at an intuitive level how hard it is to do it. Most people won't stand here. They're deathly afraid of speaking in front of other people. They're, they won't own that discomfort, right? Most people won't sacrifice their time and attention. They won't sacrifice all the things they have to give up to do something like this. You know how many other things I could have done in my life? I joke around with people. Look, I'm a better bowler than everybody in this room and everybody you know. I, I, I bowled, the last game I bowled where I wasn't even trying, I bowled one point less than the world champion when he won in the world title tournament. And that's without practicing. If I went to the fucking bowling alley instead of making fucking presentations, I'd be the world champion. But I gave that up. I gave that life up to do this. That's personal comfort sacrifice. I don't want to be doing this. I don't enjoy doing this. I know all of this stuff already. Right? I think it should be common sense knowledge by now. But it's not. And it's failing to me to teach people some of this stuff or, or all of it. And I think that's ridiculous. I think some chump from South Philly should not be standing on this stage teaching this. This should be common day every sense fucking knowledge. Everyday knowledge. Period. But unfortunately, that, that burden falls to me. And so I'll make the sacrifices required to do it. The problem is most other people will not. If you do that, you're, you're meeting the requirement. Right action through courage and willpower. 
If you're not doing that, you're not making that sacrifice of your personal comfort and your selfish concerns, you're, take, you're, you're engaged in inaction through cowardice and or laziness. So this column on the right is the great destroyers of the individual, the great destroyers of the aspects of our consciousness. Ignorance, apathy, laziness, and cowardice. They're the things that destroy the human soul. The things that build the human soul are knowledge, care, right action through willpower and courage. That's what builds the soul and advances the soul in evolutionary progression. Most people in the freedom movement who say they want freedom don't want to put any skin in the game. They're what I call, and what someone like Thomas Paine has called in his writings called the crisis, the American crisis, he called them the sunshine patriots, right? The sunshine patriot means you come out in the sun when it's all nice, when it's safe. That's not going to get the job done. We have to become winter soldiers. Winter soldiers who crossed the snow with no shoes on their bleeding feet to go and attack the redcoats. That's what we need to become. But how many of us are winter soldiers? A, 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 a small, tiny few. Not good enough. See, this is what most people in this movement won't look in the face of other people and tell them. It's not a good enough effort that we're making. I will, because I don't care about being liked. Payne said, these are the times that try men's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will, in this crisis, shrink from the service of his country. But he that stands it now deserves the love and thanks of man and woman. Tyranny, like hell, and that's where we're at, is not easily conquered. Yet we have this consolation with us, that the harder the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. Well, I'm not worried about the status of my soul in this hell that we're experiencing, but some people should be because they're not doing what's required. They're not pulling their weight. They're not actually personally getting involved in making the sacrifices they need to make because they're still in too selfish of a consciousness in their, in their mentality. And that's Satanism at a personal level. And that feeds Satanism at the worldwide level. See, the right way is almost always the hard way. I'm not here to tell you it's easy. That would be blowing smoke up your ass. I'm here to tell you the truth. It isn't easy. It's fucking hard. Okay? The right way is the hard way, unfortunately. That's where, that's where all of our ancestors that brought us here today, unfortunately, they made it that way by making the world that they've left unto us. So don't expect it to be easy. It's fucking hard. You want the easy way and do the wrong thing. That's really easy to do. That takes no intelligence. That takes no care. That takes no courage. That takes no action. Sit on your ass, keep watching other people, and then you're still in that, on that way, the wrong way, the easy way. That's really fucking easy to do. Doing this is hard, okay? And doing it consistently. Most people in this movement don't want to sacrifice any of their personal time to create change. They think it's going to magically happen on its own. And you know why? They're still stuck in this modality of consciousness. Time is money. You want me to take all my time? Oh, I, I got a job. I got things to do. I have a family. I have this, I have that. It's an endless stream of excuses, quite frankly. Okay? We got to get out of this mentation that, that it's all about just money. There's another thing. People won't sacrifice any money to do this. Okay? Let alone their time. It's not going to cut it. The sacrifice of our time is going to be the number one thing. Like I said, how much time have I sacrificed to learn what I've learned and then reach out to other people through all of the work that I've done? You want to see all the work that I've done? Then I'm not just talking trash. Look at the table over there and see how much work and hours of work I've done. And that's only a small fraction of what I've done. That's not even everything. That's a tiny bit. Once most people in this movement realize how long it does take to acquire this type of knowledge and master the skill sets, the technological skill sets required to do something like this, they give up almost immediately. They're like, this is way too hard, I'm out. And that's not going to cut it. 
If you're not the kind of person that has the persistence of a pit bull and is never going to stop coming and is never going to give up and is going to keep going and going and going no matter what happens to you, then you're not going to go very far in this so-called movement for human freedom. You're certainly not going to help us as a species to achieve it. You've got to be persistent. You've got to have a never say die, never quit attitude. And that means through action. That doesn't mean just through wishing it. Okay? I can't emphasize enough how much the, the satanic New Age movement has twisted people's beliefs and mindset into believing all you need to do is wish for it and want it and feel good about it. Bullshit. You have to act. You have to act with your mind, your body, and your soul. Yeah. And put all of those things 150% into that cause. And stop expecting other people to get it done. See, the difference between us in the modern day and the ancients, those of the ancient wisdom traditions and the ancient mystery traditions of the occult in the ancient world, is this. In an old mystery school, let's say of ancient Egypt, they would have picked a tract of river or a small place where a river narrowed, and they would have laid stone lintels across it for, for many yards, like the, the amount of an Olympic-sized pool. And they would have said, to the initiate who wanted their knowledge. You want it? Go under, swim under the lintels. You will not be able to come up for air until you reach the other side. When you come out the other side, if you survive, we'll induct you into our mystery school. And they didn't know whether they'd survive that ordeal. They held their breath, they swam for dear, dear life, and when they came up, they were asked the question, what did you want more than anything else? And the, per the initiate who made it, who didn't die underneath that, that stretch of water, said, I want an heir more than anything else in life. And they said, that's how much you have to want knowledge. That's how much you have to want what we have to show you. We're not the total keepers of it. We can show you the way. But you have to want it badly enough. Otherwise, you're wasting our time. Now, today, you know how easy it is to learn all the knowledge that they amassed in all of their mystery schools throughout the ages. You could sit in the comfort of your own home on your own comfortable so so sofa with a fucking little pad in your hand and look it all up and read endlessly. But how many people will? How many people attain to that level of knowledge? Once again, piss ant handful. Not enough. Not good enough. Our effort is not good enough. And I'm one of the only people that will say that to this community. Because most people want to be liked, and I could give a shit about being liked. I'll tell you, your efforts haven't been good enough. They have to exponentially grow. Not linearly, exponentially grow. And right now, I'm not seeing it. I'm sorry, but I'm not seeing it. Most people in this movement would never sacrifice money, comfort, and job security to do the right thing. Some would. Some would. But how many people, when, when it really comes down to brass tacks and the thumb screws are being tightened and your jobs are at risk, will cave? I'll venture to say it's over 75 to 80%. And I'm being generous. I'm being generous. Okay? And how many of the general population will take this approach? 99.9%. .9 That's how many. Okay? We have to become hardened winter soldiers and refuse all encroachments of evil. We have to engage the lost word. No! I will not comply. I will not cooperate at all. At all. Not even a little fucking bit will you get my cooperation in evil. Not even a little bit. And that's what it's going to take. That's the kind of sacrifice it's going to take. No matter what actions, what things are done to me, no matter how uncomfortable my life becomes in the short term. Most people in the freedom movement don't want to sacrifice that. They want the money continuing to come in. Right? I tell people, you may have to be poor for a time. Get over it. Oh, fucking well. Tough shit. You might need to be poor for a time. That's how it goes if you want to do the right thing. 
It's not the easy way, it's the hard way. And you may have to make that sacrifice. And, and you may need to just trudge through that period in your life. And I'm here to tell you that. Most other people won't tell you that. They want to tell you it's going to be easy and happy. No, that's not how doing the right thing works. See, the biblical adage of you can't serve two masters. You can either choose to serve mammon, which is the god of money, or you could choose to serve the god of creation, which is truth itself. That's the only choices in this reality. That's your only choices in this realm. That's your only choices in this spiritual battle. I know which side I choose because I know which one's real and I know which one is illusion. Far too many people in this movement erroneously expect this work of ending human slavery to be comfortable, to be non-confrontational, and to be fun. And once again, I'm not saying you have to totally assuage all joy in your life and say, I'm not, never going to be happy about anything. That's not what I'm saying. Don't read words into my mouth. I'm saying people expect this work to be fun and comfortable. And that's why they shy away from doing the real work. Okay? They don't want to really, really rock the boat when it comes personally to interaction with others. Because that creates tension. Right? That's not nice, happy feel. Right? That's not what this is about. This isn't making people about feeling happy. I'm not interested in your happiness. I'm interested in your freedom. And that means taking you out of your comfort zone. That's what it means. You're too damn comfort, comfortable still. If you weren't so comfortable, maybe you'd be acting already. Maybe you'd be getting into the realm of action instead of talking about it and thinking about it and feeling about it. None of that shit's going to get it done. Action's going to get it done. Okay? So this whole thing about it always has to be fun, it always has to be non-confrontational, it's a little toddler hopping around. It's a little to toddler getting his feet under him for the first time, you know, all falling over, you know. That's what it is. It's a baby's mindset. This isn't about a baby's mindset. This is about developing mental toughness to do this work. And it does, that doesn't mean never get angry, never get flustered. That means Develop the, the strength internally to actually do this work and keep pressing through no matter what happens to you. That's what it means spiritually. So where does this wishful thinking that, oh, the world's waking up, oh, we don't have to do anything uncomfortable, oh, we don't have to do, do anything that creates tension, we don't have to do anything that requires personal sacrifice, where does all this bullshit thinking come from? Here's the places it comes from. One, it comes from religion which will lie to you to your dying day to get you to believe whatever bullshit beliefs they have, okay? And again, I'm not an atheist either, right? I say, people say, what religion are you? I have no religion. Religion is the fucking problem. And that means government as a religion, authority as a religion, money as a religion. All of those are religions too. Not just the cultural religions. It's not just Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, Islam, all that shit that's a problem. It's government. It's authority. You know? It's the belief in one person's ability to rule someone else and believe that that's legitimate and it's not fucking slavery. Right? That's religious thought. Everybody out here that believes government is, ha, somehow has any moral legitimacy, they're a religious, deceived individual with a religious mindset. And how, how many people will tell them that? You know, how many people have ever described government as a, a cult? It's not just a religion, it's a dangerous fucking cult. You know? The next group that will lie to you to your dying day is the New Age Movement. And like I said, I've described in my work being in the room with people who were actively involved in New Age publishing houses who were Satanists and were telling me, wait until you hear the bullshit we're going to have our publishing houses publish and, and brand it as this is the new spirituality and what we're going to have these dumb motherfuckers believing. They told me this. They told me this 20 years ago. And I watched the world unfold the way it does today and look at the belief systems that people have. And I'm like, they did everything they said that they were going to do. These people didn't lie to me in, in the satanic uh, you know, grottos that I was involved in. They told me exactly what they were going to do. And then they went out and did it. Because they have dedication. And they understand the role of action. And believe me, they're motivated. And they're getting it done. Not like us. We're wishy-washy. 
They're the most motivated, driven, at least intellectually, from, from a, a, a brain point of view, advanced people I've ever been around. Before or since, sadly. And again, you can hear, I'm a little upset about that. I have a big chip on my shoulder about it. Because I want to work with people who are as driven as them for, for the right reasons now. Right? But I can't even find them. Can't even find them. There ain't, there's hardly any here in this city. You know? Been begging for help for 15 fucking years. And one person even comes to help me today, even pack for this thing. And he, he's an older gentleman who's been helping me the whole time I've been doing this thing. And that's like all, that's all who shows up. And it shouldn't be that way. The media obviously is pumping lies 24-7. So-called education, which is nothing but mind control and indoctrination, pumping lies at us 24-7 about what we should be doing and what's really going to create any kind of goodness or freedom in our world, and they're totally full of shit. And you know who else does it? You know who else is where this wishful thinking comes from? Our own families, our own friends, our own communities. You know, because they're just as deceived and lied to, and their head's just as up their ass as all these other people. You know, so you, you got to pay attention to where you're getting your information from, because 99.9% .9 of it is a big crock of shit. Most people in the freedom movement still make far too many excuses for the ignorance and laziness and inaction of others, right? That's why I'm one of the only people that will say this stuff to people. I'm one of the only people that will say it because I just don't give a fuck anymore. I'm going to tell you the hardcore uncomfortable truth whether you're ready to hear it or not and I don't give a damn what you think about it. Get as offended as you like. Okay? This is part of our problem in this movement. We don't point the finger enough at other people who are doing nothing. Who have never raised the goddamn finger to help. And tell them that's not good enough. Your effort is shit. There is blame to be laid. There's, there's this whole thing that there's nobody to blame. It's nonsense. Of course there are people that are at fault and deserve blame. We got to get over this nonsense that it's nobody's fault. It's ignorant people's fault. It's apathetic people's fault. It's lazy people's fault. It's, it's people who are cowards. It's their fault. Why are we in this shit? Most people in the freedom movement are so cowardly that they won't even consider the possibility of the necessity of forceful rebellion. Why? Does anybody in this room believe that what the American revolutionaries did to the British was wrong? Do you think they didn't have the right to kill them barbarically in many cases as they did? Do you think the American Revolution was not an act of love instead of an act of violence. There was only one side committing violence, and that was the British. It's who initiates coercion who is a problem. It's who initiates violent aggression against others that is the problem. This is another thing people won't teach. It matters who started it is the only thing that matters when it comes to aggression. Real self-defense Here's the bottom line of real self-defense. Don't start none and there won't be none. And if someone else starts it, you finish it. That's self-defense. So how does one, let's go to solutions now, right? So I've talked negatively enough, I think. Let's, so let's see, what's the real solution here? How do you solve this erroneous thinking? Because it is true. They do teach this in New Age circles, but it is true nonetheless. People who are deceivers in many other aspects can still speak the truth. And here's a truth they still teach. Thoughts become our environment. Absolutely a spiritual truth in this reality. What you think leads to how you behave, which leads to the reality that you experience in the world. So how do we remove erroneous thinking. There's three methods. The first thing is everybody's traumatized at some level that has made them reduce their own capacity for feeling true internal self-respect. And this comes from bullshit scenarios and violence and other things that you've experienced when you were a child. And it imprints. It imprints on 
you at a soul level, and at, at a vibrational level, at a mental and an emotional level, a psychological level. And you know what? The adage goes like this. You're not responsible for the traumas that were done to you as a child, but what you are directly responsible for is healing them as an adult. And if you're not doing that internal work through self-respect and shadow work, you're not doing the first part of the great work to end human slavery. The development of true self-respect so that you will stop standing on the sidelines and say, I'm not good enough to do this. Everybody has the capacity to be good enough. The problem is you have to work on yourself to actually develop those capabilities so that you then actually could go out on the field of battle and act and wield the sword of truth. I'm on my la last line. I'm almost wrapping up. And you have to do internal shadow work. This means confronting all the reasons that you haven't already done that. Stop making those excuses for yourself and others. Look at all the negative things about yourself and don't deny them. The first step of initiation into the occult world is stop lying to yourself. An occult initiate who wrote the Shakespearean plays, Francis Bacon, said this, this above all else, to thine own self be true. What is he saying? He's giving you the first step of occult initiation. Before anything else, be true to yourself, meaning stop lying to yourself. That's the first law of the world of the occult. Stop lying to yourself. Because if you're lying to yourself about who you are, you're going to lie to everybody else about just about anything. That's why I take myself with the good and the bad. I'm a bastard. I could be very fucking mean. Right? I don't lie to myself about it. I say this truth. I speak the truth about the world I live in, but most of all, I tell the truth about myself first and foremost, and I don't make any bullshit excuses for myself. If I fail, it's because I failed, and I own that shit. And the problem is, too many people don't own it, and they're making too many damn excuses about why they're not personally involved, and making the sacrifices that are required to win this spiritual war, and attain true human freedom. And finally, you have to be prepared with true self-defense, as I've talked about earlier. If you don't have the things that you need to be physically prepared, you're not ready. And when you're not ready, you're putting others at risk. So you need to get out of this mindset, it's all just going to work out. It ain't all just going to work out. Ask people, you know, in the, the distant past, some of them who were young children during the last totalitarian regimes. I have no friends personally from Estonia who lived through Soviet occupation and told me how brutal it was. You know, talk to some older people, talk to young people who grew up in totalitarian regimes as children and find out what it was really like, you know? And if you're ready to just roll over and let that happen, you deserve what happens to you. That ain't gonna be me. I might leave this world in a violent capacity, but I'm not going along with their bullshit totalitarian agenda. And I'm ready to resist, physically if required. And let me tell you something, if you're not, don't come looking to be at my side when the time comes, because you'll get other people hurt or you'll get them dead. What we need is courage above all else. Universal creation rewards courage above everything. That's why they're letting the dark occultists and the masters of this reality own this planet, because they're bold. They're not shy people. They're not dumb people. They're not apathetic people. They're not unmotivated people. They're bold, courageous motherfuckers. And they're sick, psychopathic, evil motherfuckers. And guess what? Creation will let them win over lazy people, cowards, people who don't have true intelligence and don't really care enough because they're not actively engaged in this spiritual battle. Evil can win. Because what creation's gonna reward above all else is courage. And that's what we have to develop to really get on this battlefield and do this work. Nothing else is going to be sufficient. 
That is a one-on-one -on -one inside job that I can only try to inspire you to do, but you yourself have to walk that path. When you do, and only if and when you do, will you truly be doing the one great work of ending human slavery on this planet. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention.